So this is just an opportunity to what I call jam cam, just kind of sit down and sit back and grab a cocktail and watch me paint. And I'll just be creating something. I'll talk my process through a little bit. Um, and uh, what's going through my head as I'm doing it, maybe some of the colors that I'm using and why I'm using them. So uh, what I'll do is I'll be switching my camera to go to my camera that faces right down since I don't paint up and down, it's watercolor, so I have to paint straight down. So I'm gonna switch my camera and we are going to, and you'll see me again when I'm done, okay? So thanks for coming on everybody. I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch here. And this is my little art workstation here. And uh, I am going to, this is the, I was, was going to be taking a workshop and I had asked people to send me photographs of their children, family, pets, whatever. And this one came to me and I was so struck by it. I thought she was absolutely gorgeous. Um, just the look on her face and that dreamy, you know, sort of look away and her hair sort of tousled and the, the lines on her shirt wrapping around and the wisps. So this is what I'm going to be doing today. I don't know if um, she's coming on, the woman who uh, sent me this um, photograph, but uh, if you're on and you watch me and, and uh, it's your photograph that you sent to me and I'm using it, it is my gift to you. So I'm going to start with what I usually start with, which is the eyes. And I start with the eyes because I always feel that if you can get the eyes, you really have the person. There's nothing else that you need to worry about getting. And I have my paints and my brushes all set up here, ready to go. And the color that I'm gonna start with is a color that I love, my students know I love it, Dragon's Blood. And it's a beautiful, cool orange. And what I wanna do is just sort of start getting the shape of the eye and the eyelid and maybe some of the shadows going on. And I start with this color because you don't want a young girl like this looking like she's got, you know, major eyeliner going on her face. So I'm just sort of getting that initial shape. I'm carrying it up a little bit onto the eyebrow. So while it is an orange color, it's not really a flesh color. And what will happen is, is that as, as we build it, this color will sort of dissipate and you really won't see too much of it at all. It's just a way to get started. And that's sort of the, the fear is how you get started. How do we get started with something like this? Yeah. And I got Howie finger picking in the background, cooling me off, slowing me down, chilling me out. Howard Emerson, um, dot com. if you like what you hear, he's always in the studio doing something wonderful. He's working on a new uh, CD now. Okay, just going to switch to a bigger brush, get some more. Now, interestingly enough, when I'm using an orange such, such as this, I want to cool it down with maybe a little violet and maybe a little blue. When we look at skin tones, there are more than one color, right? There, there's no color flesh. Don't they say that in uh, the crayons? There's no color flesh. And our skin tones are all different. Just adding a light wash. This is using my dragon's blood and my violet. My students know I have a lot of violets. We just painted hydrangeas. Had so much fun doing that. I want to get this nice shadow here on that eye. Keep it all soft. What I talk about a lot when I'm doing a portrait is the idea that I'm really painting shadow shapes. 
this particular painting, the photograph doesn't really have heavy shadows, so I sort of have to find them and create them. But that light coming in is on the side of her face is really valuable real estate, and I want to keep that very, very soft and very white. And that creates a lot of interest. By adding a little blue to my dragon's blood, my dragon's blood is a beautiful orange, a cool orange, and the blue just makes it a little shadowy, which is great. And there's a nice blue shadow on the side of her face kicking in, probably like some sunlight. So I'm gonna add blue on that side too. I know it's gonna look strange at first, but you'll see it comes together. When I teach portraits, I talk about um, a class that I took at FIT many, 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 many moons ago. And the teacher would talk about, she would shut off the overhead lights and, and she would talk about the natural skin tones that we could see with just natural light. And we would learn how to paint and find and see and paint the beautiful blues and greens and oranges and pinks and violets that was was in um, that was in our skin tones. And when we did that, we, we got it to come alive. It was really a fascinating class. Never forgot it. It's a lot of years ago now, but never, ever, ever forgot that workshop a class, actually. It's an ongoing class. So I just want to lay down a nice skin tone. So another thing you have to sort of be conscious of when you're painting a younger person is that you don't just paint lips and make it look like they're wearing makeup and lipstick. You really need to make sure you tone those things down. FIT taught me a lot of things. I use all of those skill sets to this day still. It's really an incredible, it was an incredible time. It was a long time ago, but I'm not telling you how long ago. Beautiful shadow under her neck. Usually this is a really good spot to just melt right into. So you can see I kept this side of her face really white. I'll be adding a little bit more color, but just to start, to start getting some tones down. We'll see how dark we go with all of it. Let's get those eyes. I think they're blue. It's hard to tell from the photograph, but they're, if they're blue, they're like a nice deep blue. So I'm gonna use uh, a color. I'm gonna use my indigo and maybe a little ultramarine blue. And a nice little trick is to always put a little bit of lighter blue in the corners of the eyes. That makes it look round. It gives it a little shadow and makes it look round. So it's a nice little trick that um, skill that we add. Oh, and I'm hearing people coming in. Hello, whoever came in. We couldn't wait while you were getting your cocktail. You always want to hold on to that nice highlight in the eye. That really gives the eye a lot of, a lot of life. And there we go. Got her eyes. If you get the eyes, you really do have so much of the job done. Or 
they done? No, we still have to go in and add a pupil and some shadow and stuff, but that's a good start. Watercolor is all about the balance of paint to color, what colors. It's such a balancing act and there's no real answers. It's just a matter of finding, I react to what I see here. That's really important to me is that um, rather than having a, a, a clear cut formula that I make sure that I, I'm reacting to what I'm seeing happening on the page. And that gives me a lot of uh, feedback. So you could see when we started off, those lines looked really strong, but now because the eyes are darker, everything is relative to that. And you know, they say you can't correct a watercolor, but boy, is that not true. Oops. I wanna bring a little color to her face. So I'm gonna be using I love that blue that I added over there. A little bit of, of coolness right under her eye. She has a particular type of um, shadow under here, which is you have to get those things if you want it to look like the person. We don't want her to look old, certainly, but we do want to get certain characteristics that she has. And you don't really paint eyelashes, you know? Um, it just looks too fake, looks too twiggy. You really just need to indicate that. All right, I'm gonna switch Howie to his other. That was, what did I just play here? I played Crossing Lake Crystal. Now I'm gonna play, it ain't necessarily so. Thank you again, Howard. And again, if you like what you hear, he's on howardemerson.com. And thank you. So interesting, instead of adding a brown eye, eyebrow, what I did was I used my complementary colors. I used my dragon's blood, which is an orange, and a little blue, which is the complement to it. And it creates a nice soft brow. I'm not going for brown. And cerulean just mixes so beautifully with the dragon's blood. I think there's a chat room. Um, I don't know, uh, uh, Susan or, or Kathy, I don't know if anybody has any questions that might come up in the chat room. I can't really see it because I'm not looking at that screen, 
But if there's any questions that anybody has, if you want to, you know, um, read them off, I'm happy to uh, answer any questions people have about what I'm doing or my process or, or anything. Okay, uh, Jan, right now I, we don't have the chat room on Zoom. Okay. Um, but uh, we'll keep an eye on the um, YouTube channel. Okay, that. perfect. Thank you. I'm really amazed at how much I, from my FIT days, I hold on to when I'm doing these. So much of the bone structure and things that we learned um, in class that was drilled into us certainly comes into play. If you've never taken anatomy or done um, live drawing classes, we did that, oh my goodness, every day, all day six hours a day and it really has stuck with me. Jen, just... we have a couple questions. Oh, okay, good. Lois, Lois wants to know uh, what color you're using on the lips and another uh, YouTube video uh, watcher is asking, what is your favorite watercolor paints? Okay, good questions. Um, so to answer, what I used on her lips is the same dragon's blood that I was using. Um, and what I did was I mixed it with a little bit of a pinky violet, just to give it a little bit more so it doesn't look orange. Dragon's Blood is a color by a company, an Italian company called Mamari. And um, to answer that YouTube question, it is my favorite uh, manufacturer of, yeah, of colors, Mamari Blue. They're not as well known, but they are really an incredible, um, incredible brand. And I'm big, big, big into them. I have never, I have not been able to find another color similar to my dragon's blood. So um, I, you know, and, and my local stores, Reebies and Blix, they try to get it for me. They're so sweet. They really do try very hard to get me <laughs> my crazy colors. Also Daniel Smith, I'm a big Daniel Smith user for different reasons. There's different reasons why I use um, the colors that I do. Daniel Smith has a wonderful line of colors that actually break up into other colors and give us wonderful granulation. And so I use specific colors for very specific purposes. But to me, the Mamaris are just perfect for, for doing portraits. I think other, um, uh, with other colors, you really have to play around with so many colors to get a good thing going on, but Mamari plays so well with my violets and with my blues and whatnot. It's just a, just a great color. Unfortunately, our, you know, our stores are starting to open up again. One of my other colors, my favorite colors is, uh, as my students know, is uh, Dragon's Blood. Um, in addition to that, it's uh, um, Indigo. The indigo that they have is just a beautiful uh, color. It's a warm, beautiful indigo color, and I love it. Okay, Jen, you may have answered one of these questions already. One was, what color mind. violet are you using? Okay, violet, yeah. 
And another question is, are you dipping into the water and then on a paper towel? I uh, no, I do have a mat here, a, a dish mat that I have in case I need to remove a lot of water. So if I go into my water, which is right here, I may have too much water on it. So I'll just lightly tap my brush to this uh, surface here, the, the towel. Um, some people use a lot of uh, um, paper towels, but I find this dish mat is just perfect for me actually. So that's in addition to that. So just so I don't have so much uh, water on my brush, I'm able to monitor it really easily and quickly. Um, in addition to what violet I'm using, I have a couple that I'm using. Um, one of my favorites is uh, I'm using a pinky violet, which is called Verzino, which is a Bambari color, which I love. Um, and it's a beautiful, cool, pinky violet color. And so I use that a lot. And, uh, and my dragon's blood. Basically, I've only used really three colors here. My pinky violet, my Verzino, my uh, indigo, and my dragon's blood. Those are really the only colors I've used so far. So like an area here where I'm going around her jaw and on her, onto her uh, neck, you might think, well, what color is that? It's kind of a brown color, but me, I would rather go to a violet and tone my orange down with a violet and it looks so much more beautiful. And there Next, I have, I have it. One more question. And okay. somebody is asking about how you got the drawing um, on the paper to begin with. Uh, did you? outline it with a pencil? Yes, I, what I do first is I do a contour drawing. So I always do a contour drawing first. So I did have a very light drawing all, all set to go, yeah. It's better to have, I, some, some people do just go ahead and, and just start drawing. I sort of like to have a, my roadmap. And it's still, like I said, it's just a simple contour drawing that really gives me exactly where I wanna be. I think we're going to hear how we sing on this one. Is it this one? It's one of them. So when I'm going into her hair, I just want to gently, softly go into her hair so I don't have a hard line around her, her head, because otherwise it'll look like she's wearing a wig. So you just softly blend that into her hair and then build her hair from there. So you can see how I didn't have to use brown. I used a beautiful violet and I'm gonna go in and make this a little darker. And I don't pre-mix my colors on a palette generally. I go right from my palette into my paper. And I like what happens when I do that. It's a much more natural look. Oh, see, I like the questions, that's very good. I have a little scrubber brush here. I just want to get a little bit more highlight in her eye, her eyes. So this helps me scrub out a little color and just lighten her, the inside of her eyes a little bit, just to get a little bit more life in them. As I darken other areas. She's coming together pretty fast. You never really know, but I'm so glad. Jan, and it looks like her. Question. Yeah, sure, go ahead. This one's from Jillian. Uh, you said you were using a violet and a blue in the eyes. Which yes. blue? Also, that was my indigo? Reflection. I'm sorry? She also wants to know how you place the reflection in the eye. Well, I am looking at the photo and it is, you know, the light is sort of coming from this side and this side. There's a light on this side. And there's also a reflective light on this side. So I see in the photograph that there really is a very nice um, reflection that's going on. So I want to be sure to always, you know, make, make sure that that's in there. Absolutely. And I mentioned the color of the eyes. Is that was the other question? I used my indigo. 
Yes, she, uh, she said you were using a violet and a blue in the eyes, and she wanted to know what those colors were. The other blue that I used, I used my indigo, which is a dark blue, and I used a little of my ultramarine blue. So just to give it a little bluer. One is a cool blue and the other one's a warm blue. Okay, like everything that's going on, it's gonna be hard to finish too much of her face without working a little bit into her um, her hair a little bit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, oh, there's Howie singing. So cool. He's just the coolest. Crazy mama. Okay. Okay, for the hair, I'm gonna use a combination of um, a raw sienna, which is like a sandy kind of color. And um, I'm probably gonna use um, a darker violet to go into different other parts of her hair because as I said before, blue and orange are complementary colors so it helps tone it down a little bit. Same thing with, I just wanna fix something on her nose, a little highlight that I see there lift that up a little bit. Um, so if I add our, my raw sienna is a yellow. And if I add violet to it, most people would go to brown and I get that, you know, um, I like color and I like the idea of colors mixing again on the paper. So to tone my yellow down, I'm going to add violet. I'm going to do it right now and you're going to see it happen. So the violet I'm using is a Mamari color. It's my bluish violet. I'm going to add it right in here. And it'll tone it down. And a little bit more of my yellow, a little bit more of my violet. I'm getting a nice, beautiful yellow and violet. Tone each other down and they make a beautiful brown. And that's just the way colors work. And I have a beautiful rigger brush that I can use to pull strands out to create her hair. So the rigger is a nice long brush and it gives me an opportunity to just pull color out and get some of these wisps that are just so beautiful to the photograph. And I'm able to pull that color right out from this area here that is already kind of on the mixing block right in here. Just gonna add a little more color to darken it because as I pull it out, I'm losing a little bit. So I wanna make sure that I keep it charged up nicely. And when they mix on the paper, you really don't feel the, um, you don't feel like you're looking at violet. It's, it's a very interesting thing because they are really meant to work together in this manner. Meaning compliments. Very violet that I just added there. I'm not worried. It's moving and I could mix it and let it pull into this nice dark area on the top of her head. She's got a little red in her hair too, so I'm just gonna add a little dragon's blood. This rigger just lets me pull nice little strands down very softly. Ever so slow, just so soft. So for me, it's hard to finish the face until I build the hair. So that's why I went into the hair um, 
when I'm painting, I don't feel it necessary to finish any area before I go on to another area. It's so nice to be able to move around a painting and know that you have the ability to move around and um, make adjustments as you, as you are painting. This rigger just gives me beautiful thin lines, absolutely gorgeous lines. And it's meant to be dragged. It's not meant to paint this way. They're meant to be dragged these riggers and guess what guys I don't have to paint every hair on her head because you know it's hair people know it's hair so one of the things that I have always seemed to do um, and enjoy to do is to leave something out for the viewer because you know you have the photo what makes the painting special is that it's painted and it's painterly and it's interpretive so many different styles exist out there right so what makes you any different than anybody else and that in within that answer is where you start developing your own style and your own approach and you could learn from the very best, but what will happen is, is you will start discovering that you have a style. Jan, uh, we have a compliment from Matt, and he just said that he's enjoying watching you paint. It's been a while, and that this is excellent, and it's wonderful to watch the magic occur. Oh, Matt. Matt is, uh, you know, all the classes stopped, of course. And, but Matt is an incredible, he does incredible figurative drawings, really beautiful, beautiful, beautiful work he does. Um, very distinctive style. And Matt, thank you so much. It's so nice to see you right there um, with me. It's a pleasure and it's a joy and it's a privilege. Really, this is just so special. I thank the library for, for doing this. It's just, um, you know, it's where I feel the most natural is in front of people painting. It's just, this is my norm. And while we can't be together, this is, this is sort of our new norm. Another question, uh, Jan, was someone was asking about uh, where you teach more formally. And I just want to put out there that I'd be happy to share your email or your website uh, with everyone who had registered. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, the best answer to that is to sign up for my newsletter. I'm not teaching anywhere right now, um, except online. Uh, so, um, yeah, there's just, and, and I don't know where I'll be when all of this sort of comes out on the other side. It's very hard to say what's going to happen. So I, I can't really answer all of that. So many things are changing. Um, I do have a workshop I'm doing in Vermont. It was supposed to be this week, interestingly enough. And um, of course that, that got rescheduled. It's actually rescheduled for October, mid-October. Um, and it's a beautiful inn in uh, Southern Vermont. And they have an incredible artist studio, just wonderful. And um, let's hope that we all feel really comfortable about being together at that point. But who knows? And where I'll be on the other side of this, I have no idea. So right now I'll just tell, share with you every, I have a class every Tuesday on Zoom and, um, and we decide just like we do in class, what we're gonna do next week. So we have a lot of fun. And um, <clears throat> and this Thursday, I have a class that is that a workshop that already started. Uh, I'd like to do a series on the Thursdays. And this one is sand, sea, surf, sky, and sunsets. <laughs> and we just had our first one, which worked out really good, really had a wonderful time and a lot of fun. And uh, the next, I think, workshop we're going to do is perhaps going to be 
um, a four week florals, just doing different flowers. I'm a little unique in so far as what I like to teach is everything except abstract. I'm not an abstract painter, but everything else I'll do. Obviously I do portraits and I love teaching portraits, uh, florals, um, old rusty trucks, landscapes, waterscapes. I just enjoy the um, challenge of it all. Jen, Melissa would like to know if you have a paper preference for watercolor. Oh, that's a good question. And yes, I do. And my preference is actually, well, I, I, I've been in, in experimenting with more different papers, but my favorite, sorry, I'm just getting my spray bottle. My favorite is Arches Hot Press. Just misting this down just so it moves a little bit. Uh, Arches 300 pound hot press paper is my favorite. So yes, i am also been enjoying Waterford, uh, Waterford paper. Um, I think that's a cold press. Yeah, I think that's a cold press. Or the only hot press I really enjoy is the Arches. Um, and uh, Kilimanjaro, which is a paper that I get over um, from uh, cheap Joe's Kilimanjaro. Nice paper. I've really been enjoyed playing with it. Different, does different things. I stick with my hot press for portraits because it's a very predictable result. So very good questions. Thank you guys. I'm just softening some of the hair around her face with that rigor brush. Throwing her ear in shadow. That's the interesting part about faces and figures is that we, we know it's hair. We know there's eyes and noses and mouths and we know all of that's there. So we can let our imagination or our what we what we see and what we what our eyes fill in. It's sort of why we maybe miss typos and whatnot is because our eyes do fill things in. So there is a tendency when doing um, a portrait that you feel you have to, you know, answer every question. And I like a lot of the suggestiveness that's going on. Now, before I do any more on her face, I wanna get her the, the stripes on her shirt, which I think are very important because um, uh, I really, sorry about that. Um, I swear I don't get any calls during the day except when I'm on a class, so I apologize. Um, I feel it's very important to get that shape and then I could go back into her face and make any decisions that I want to there. So before I do the stripes on her shirt, what I'm gonna do is just get a little bit of the tonality of, of it, the sort of movement of maybe as it goes back into her shoulder back here, this goes pretty dark. And I know it's a neck and I know it's her hair and I know it's a shirt. So I could just melt. And I love that word. I love the idea of just melting marks. I don't have to give all the answers. So putting these marks down before gives me the freedom to put the stripes on afterwards. And I, you know what, I generally do put a, a background, but I really don't think that I want to on this one. There's just something so wistful about her that I really want that to speak up. Just recharging this while I'm waiting for that to dry. And you can see we're what, like, you know, um, 40 minutes into this and I'm just about done with her. So. Um, 
that's <laughs> it's kind of funny. I my students know that I, I paint very fast, and I like painting fast because it gives me the opportunity to be very spontaneous. Now, here's an old thing from FIT: is how the clothes and the stripes are sitting around her shoulder. And you want to get that because that suggests the body. And how much do I need to know she's wearing a striped shirt? Really, you know, you just don't need, you don't need to give all the answers. You just have to suggest them and let your viewer make those decisions. And I'm just keeping an eye on the face. And I, I feel like there's a couple of areas I sort of want to go back into now that I have this all done. And now I'm doing something with the blue that we do in class, which is why the blue in her face works. It's reflective color and it's what we call bridging the palette. So giving color in multiple areas that tie the painting together. It makes it very painterly. Jan, someone wants to know if you are using imperial purple. Um, I do have imperial purple. I haven't used it for this particular painting, but I do have it and I do like it. That's a Daniel Smith color. And what I like about that is it granulates into pinks. What I'm, I mentioned before, I'm using mostly my Mamari colors because they do not granulate because I don't want that kind of, I don't want to um, have to worry about granulation on her face. So I'm actually not using any granulating colors. The only color that might granulate a little bit might have been my cerulean, but because I had mixed it with my dragon's blood, it did not. And my Verzino Violet is also a Mamari color and that does not granulate. She has these beautiful eyes that just kind of like teardrop down. So I really want to be sure to, to um, get that. That would be a very important part of ensuring that I get, I capture her. going on. Things are bouncing all over the place. Sorry about the noise, guys. It's my office. I would love to paint in my art studio up in another part of the house, but um, all of my equipment is here in my office. So that's why I have the phones and the email and all of that stuff. So I apologize for all the extra sound effects. And there's a part that I just want to let the painting rest and take a look and see if there's anything more I wish to do to it. And watercolors <clears throat> is very timing. So you really do need to make sure that 
you time things that you're working in other areas while things are drying. So for instance, I really needed to wait till her lips were dry to go back in and just to create that separation that she has. So you do have to time yourself on these and just not uh, feel like, because that's when you get your results are maybe a little bit more um, uh, unpredictable because what's happening is as you're working in a damp area and with watercolors, you don't want to work in a damp area. You want to work either wet, wet into wet, which I did a lot with her hair and, or you want to work on dry, which is what I'm doing now with her lips. We're just coming up to like 50 minutes now. So maybe a little bit more shadow on her eyes, little dragon's blood and violet. right here. But overall, I feel like she came together pretty effortlessly. And of course, <laughs> thank goodness for that because, you know, I'm like live here. <laughs> Again, I don't think you have to worry. You're getting nothing but compliments. Oh, that's so sweet of everybody. Thank you so much. Now, so you could see that nice blue that's in the corner of her face. Really, while maybe it appeared to be a little weird before, and I'm going to actually add a little bit more because I love it so much. Wow, that you, do you see what just that just did? It was like all of a sudden, it just made such a difference in her. The whole thing just really popped. That that's a scary move. I know. I understand. It's I get it. But what do we say in class? Is you know, color gets the credit, but contrast does the work. I love that little blue that I added there. I'm really enjoying these little blue spots. A little contrary to what you might expect, but it's helping to tie the painting together. Okay, well, I'm thinking she's somewhat done. Um, I'm gonna let it rest for a while, but I'm gonna come back on and see if everybody, um, say hi back to everybody. So I'm gonna switch my camera. Oh, I see more people came on. All right. Ugh. Wow. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so um, thank you. Thank you. I feel like taking a bath. Um, thank you for coming on my first Jan Cam. This was a lot of fun. It's a lot of pressure I put on myself, but I love doing it so, and I love having you guys sort of be there, you know, um, in this observing thing with me. Actually, I just see something happening. I have to adjust my painting. Hold on one second. Something's moving and I want to push it back. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, thank you so much for coming on. I'll be doing another one next week. I think I may do a pet next week or I think I have this picture of this uh, woman with a hat on that I might try, but maybe we'll do a pet next week. And uh, 
if anybody recognizes this uh, face, it's somebody's granddaughter, I think, that sent this to me to paint. Jan? Um, yeah. Did we had asked someone to ask, uh, someone asked if you could please show the photo that you used as a, as a model. Yes, I will do that right here, right now. I'm gonna put them side by side. And for those of you who are on Zoom, uh, next week, if you'd like to log in on the YouTube channel, that's where we have the chat feature available. So, photo, painting. That help maybe this is better so this was my reference this is my painting that's great Jan thank you very much this was wonderful I think everybody enjoyed it um, so you're all saying thank you and that you're amazing and that they enjoyed the class so that's so and I will see you next week yeah, if anybody um, wants to have any more questions or anything, we have a few more minutes. I mean, I finished, you know, seven minutes before the end of the hour, but if you have any more questions, please, uh, you know, um, feel free to ask. Um, my website is janguarinofineart.com. If anybody would like to, um, uh, you know, check out my website, my newsletter, I have paintings that are in Northport Village for sale. Uh, in the nest and in the Firefly Gallery. And uh, I'm doing these Zoom classes, which I, you know, it's the most amount of normal I get to feel in, during the week is this. So I, uh, I really enjoy having you guys come on and um, be a part of, of that and exploring your own artwork, which is just so, so wonderful to have that during this crazy time that we could just come together and and be together and paint and explore and create and have fun and laugh and listen to great music. Thank you, Howard, howieemerson.com, Howard Emerson. Um, him and his finger picking, he's working on a new CD now at the studio. So I'm anxious to hear that. I heard a little bit of it, it sounds great. Jen, Ask if you want to, I can uh, allow everyone to unmute themselves so they would just sure. want to say goodbye. Yeah, right? absolutely, sure, unmute. <laughs> It was fun, Jan. Oh, Janet, good seeing you, honey. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hello, hello. Thank yeah. you. Oh, thank you, so Jan. Welcome. You're welcome, thank you, Eleanor. Eleanor. You're welcome. Yep, I see you. You're thank so you. Good. It was beautiful. So great seeing you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll thank see you, you next Tuesday. All right. See you <laughs> next Tuesday for the class, Wednesday for the Jan Cam, and uh, and a lot of you. be in town. Thank okay. You. All right. Bye. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Stay tuned next week. I think I think I got a dog, a, a pet. I'm gonna do. Yeah. Um, Put it up a little bit. Yeah. Good. Good Thank seeing you. you. Good seeing you. Be fun. Thank you. Good Thank seeing you. everybody. Thanks for popping in from Florida down there, Barbara. I see you, <laughs> Margo. Thanks for coming on, my millennial Jenna. Gotcha, <laughs> darling. <laughs> my beloved millennial. Okay. Less than an hour. I did it. You did great, Jan. I'm going to say goodbye and All right. close Everybody up. So finish their cocktail. I'm going to start mine. <laughs> it's like a great idea. Bye. Have a good week. Bye Have bye. a good one, everybody. Bye, See you everyone. next week. Thanks for popping in. Bye, Matt. Bye. Margo. Bye, guys. Anne, Michelle, Pat, <laughs> Denise, Mary, on Carol. Good seeing everybody. Lawrence, Lorraine, thanks for coming on, guys. <laughs>